If you want to give your end users the best way possible to filter their data down on a report, slice and dice, see those insights that are key for them, I'm going to show you the options we have in the Power BI desktop, plus some awesome extra content at the end as well. I'm going to show you that we have two slicer visuals available to us in the Power BI desktop. The first one that we can see is over here in your visualization pane. This is the traditional slicer. The next one that we have is the new one with this nice little lightning bolt is the new slicer style. If you are not seeing this new slicer in your visualization pane, go ahead check to see which version of Power BI you are running. And if it's not up to date, get that new version so you can take advantage of all the cool features I'm going to show you. Let's look at the old slicer. Right now, up at the top of my page, I have a slicer and a slicer is just an on page filter. I can choose any column of data from any of my tables and then decide, you know what? I want to see all of the visuals on my report page filtered down to just that column of data. For example, I have the year in this slicer and that allows me to then filter the visuals. I currently just have one, but if I had multiples, this would filter all of them. And I could say, you know what? I just want to see the profit for 2006. So when I filter it, now that column filters and slices that down. I can also have multiple filters and slicers on a page. So I can also decide, you know what? I'm also gonna only look at France and let's say the UK for 2006. So our slicers are controlling the data that is then present per user, right? This is for each individual user to control as they see fit. If we want to have off page filtering, that's in our filter pane, right? That is not for this crowd. This is what you want your end user to control. Now, when we're working with the slicer visuals, we have stylistic options. So with your visual selected, you can come over here to your paintbrush icon where we can then format our visual. And in the very first setting is our slicer settings. And this is where we can choose the style of the slicer available to us. Right now, I have a year column selected, which gives me additional options for date related slicers. Right now, I have drop down selected, which gives me a drop down. This is a fantastic option if you have limited space on your page and also if you have a lot of options. Our first option is a vertical list. Now notice with the vertical list as I pull that down, if you have a lot of options, this could take up a lot of space on your page, but it is nice to visually see each one of those things in play. The next one is the tile and the tile is like a button. So that gives you the ability to click a button. Now I will give you a little spoiler warning. If I want to have this tile button style, I'm not going to be using this slicer. I will use the new slicer because the new slicer is a button. It's really fantastic and it's got a lot of cool stylistic abilities that we're lacking in our traditional slicer we have on right now. Let's look at between. So between is one that you will only see with dates and I can see I have my dates present up here and I'm also I have this slider down at the bottom that allows me to pull these back and forth to control the date range that is present. Now, some people love to have this between style, but they don't want to have the slider. And you can do that by turning the slider off down here at the bottom of your visualization pane. The additional two that you have for dates are less than or equal to. Notice that starts it at one point. You can't do that it, or you can't change that it freezes it essentially but I can kind of change that end time and of course the greater than or equal to is the reverse where the end time is frozen but the start time is what you're able to adjust you can make the decision that works best for your report as well as what you know your team will interact with best you can also of course have multiple slicers on a page and based off of what is in one right that can link and change the abilities and the content in the next slicer that you have let's go ahead now and look at the new slicer now this one is solely a button style so both of these visuals so this visual that is at kind of the top middle of the page as well as this one all the way over to the bottom left these are both the same slicer 
but we can see we can have very drastically different styles with this with some really simple tweaks. Now the cool thing about this button slicer is that we can have background images now. We can also put images or icons or pictures right onto this slicer in addition. In your slicer settings, you are going to have the ability to multi-select or single select, and this works for both slicers. In this selection area, I can decide whether I want to allow people, hey, you can only select one option at a time. If single select is on, I might also decide, hey, you know what, I'm gonna allow you to click control. So hold control and multi-select. Right now I have Australia, France, and Germany selected, but it's only letting you click one at a time. You'd have to hold the control key down to select multiples. We can also have this force selection on. So if I have single select on, I can also allow force selection. And then I can also, if I turn force selection off, I can allow this select all button. So select all is going to provide an additional one. I can see I have this year over here and we can make that a little bit larger to see that. It gives me that select all button where if I want to select all, boom, it's gonna select or deselect everything all at the same time. Controlling this behavior is all about knowing what will your end user prefer to see? What do they like clicking on? How are things changing? And does it make sense for them as they go through? What I've noticed a lot is that buttons are very easy to click on, right? They make a lot of sense. You see that and you're like, oh, 2005, fantastic. That's what I wanna do. I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna see that. Versus sometimes, you know, a drop down might get a little bit hidden or they might not understand that they can interact or see all of those items inside. If you have added the new slicer, put a comment below. Tell me what you've used it for, the type of data, and how fancy did you get with adding those in. Now, if that's a little bit too far for you, what I want you to do is go to our on-demand learning page. I have a class for you. It is our beginner Power BI class, and it goes through, of course, the whole process start to finish of the Power BI life cycle. But we talk about using visuals, setting up report pages, and working with slicers. Now, let me show you a few few other stylistic options that I did for the new slicer, just so you can get some ideas of what you can do. So we've got some really funky things in here, shape wise, and of course, where you can click different end points or starting points with those bars. And even of course, bringing in background images and icons or images for your slicers. If you want to see and follow along step-by-step step with how I put these plus other ones of the new slicer design together, I have a video on that here on our Pragmatic Verse channel and I will link that below so you can easily just click right on over, see all of the different styling options, see how you can go into those formatting options over in your visualization pane and make those changes, add those background images, add those icons and get some really fancy buttons going along. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.